I am Jane Piper. I'm the City Librarian for the Toronto Public Library, and it is a great pleasure to welcome you here tonight for this event. This is actually the 14th year that the Toronto Public Library has partnered with Penn Canada to host a Freedom to Read Week event. We actually consider it one of the most important events we do all year. And that's because we believe that preserving the freedom to read is at the core, actually, of what libraries and librarians do. We believe there's a critical combination of diversity of choice, universal access, that allows people to learn, to think, and to share ideas. Each year, Toronto Public Library presents to our board our challenged materials report. Some of you may have seen some of the media coverage of it this year. It, is, it documents the public's uh, requests for us to reconsider items we've added to our collection. I mention this because I believe it's the library's responsibility to create an environment where people can make those questions and can ask of us to reconsider so that we can have a debate about diversity and choice in our public library. And I guess that leads us to the heart of the question tonight. We are informed by our responsibility to guarantee intellectual freedom, but we also have the responsibility to ask the question, where, if anywhere, does the right to free expression end? I think it's going to be an intriguing discussion tonight, so let's begin. And I will do that by uh, introducing our host for this evening's program, and that is Ellen Seligman, who is the president of Penn Canada. In Ellen's capacity at Penn, she works tirelessly on behalf of writers both here in Canada and abroad. She has a busy day job too. She is the publisher of fiction and the senior vice, uh, senior vice president at McClellan and Stewart. In that capacity, she is an active supporter and developer of writers who are both at the beginning of their career and she continues to edit and publish many authors who are household names in Canada and who have won, consistently won Canada's top literary awards. Her work has been recognized in several ways. She has won the Editor of the Year Award twice. She has won the Toronto Arts Award. And in 2009, she was awarded the Order of Ontario. So please join me in welcoming Ellen Seligman to the podium. Thank you, Jane. And thank you all for joining us for what promises to be an incredibly provocative and interesting evening. <laughs> Steve Pagan is heckling from the wings. So um, this is the 14th year that the Toronto Reference Library has worked in association with Penn Canada, as Jane mentioned, uh, to stage events like this. So I would like to begin by thanking uh, City Librarian Jane Piper and Helen Lantania, Communications Officer at the Toronto Public Library, for helping us to stage our events in this amazing public and space. I would also like to thank Anne McClelland, who is the Executive Director of the Book and Periodical Council, the organization that created Freedom to Read Week more than 25 years ago, as a way of encouraging Canadians to discuss and reaffirm their commitment to intellectual freedom and a robust public sphere. I'd also like to thank staff and volunteers from Penn Canada and the Toronto Reference Library who are helping to make events like tonight's run smoothly. I'd also like to thank uh, Penn Canada's program coordinator, Brendan DeCarries, who also organized tonight's event. And I think um, we can thank him now and we'll, we will thank him even more later. Also, a uh, huge thanks to Bruce Walsh, who, among other things, is, a fun is on our board of directors at Penn Canada. He is a tireless fundraiser and an ardent and eloquent advocate for the right to freedom of expression. Those of you who have attended previous Penn Canada events will notice the empty chair on the stage tonight, as at other events. Tonight, we photograph uh, the photograph is of a writer who has been silenced for the peaceful exercise of universal right to freedom of expression. Tonight, for the second year running, is Liu Jabo, a scholar, literary scholar in China, former president of the independent Chinese Penn Center, co-author of the groundbreaking reform manifesto Charter 08, and winner of the 
2010 Nobel P Peace Prize, which he was unable to accept um, in person. During this event, Penn Canada will collect signatures for a petition on Mr. Yu's behalf. I hope that all of you in the audience who share our convictions about the fundamental importance of the right to free expression will sign this petition and help support Penn Canada's appeal. Tonight's discussion will consider the regulation of hate speech in a modern multicultural democracy, particularly the problem of deciding how to distinguish legitimate expression of unpopular or minority views from opinions which have been formulated mainly to produce feelings of hatred towards an identifiable group. In open societies, there is rarely consensus as to where this line should be drawn, as, as Jane was saying, nor is there broad agreement on who should get to draw it. Our panelists this evening bring a wealth of experience in the Canadian public sphere and elsewhere to their deliberations on these questions. And I want, without delay, to thank our distinguished panelists for coming tonight. Some of them have traveled to get here. They've made time in their busy schedules to help support our cause and the cause of us all. And also thank you to Steve Pakin, uh, who everybody knows, uh, The Agenda, TVO's The Agenda with Steve Pakin. So please join me in welcoming Steve Pakin, the, pa the uh, moderator for tonight's panel. Thank you. Okay, my first question is, why aren't you all at home in front of your television sets getting ready to watch the agenda tonight? <laughs> my second question, or I guess not question, the second thing I should say is, it's okay, we repeat it at 11 o'clock and you can watch it then. And we have not a bad program tonight, let me take, I know we don't run commercials on TVO, but I will take this opportunity in front of all these people to say, uh, we do have not a bad show tonight that you might want to flip on at 11 o'clock. Uh, we have two former McGinty cabinet ministers, you may know them. One's name is Jim Watson. He quit to run for mayor of Ottawa and won. We have another one named George Smitherman who quit to run for mayor of Toronto and didn't win. And then a third former liberal named Rocco Rossi who ran for mayor and I think is now a conservative. And we're gonna to talk to all three of them tonight. And obviously I did it already because that's why I'm here. So anyway, that's tonight. Uh, you introduced me, Ellen, as Steve Pakin, but I think in the Metro Library, or sorry, I've been, been in Toronto for a long time. In the Toronto Reference Library, uh, I should refer to myself as 27131000069510, which is my library card number, and I know that because I use the system a lot. A quick word about uh, our format tonight. Uh, we're going to bring our guests up, and they will take their seats. We'll start it here. We're not going to have opening statements. We're going to keep this very informal. Q&A up here for as long as it merits. And then if you've taken the trouble to come out here on a Friday night, I assume that you want to take part in this as well. So we're going to leave lots of time for questions. And I'll take the hand mic and go into the audience. Those of you old enough to remember the old Phil Donahue show, we'll do it like that. You don't have to line up at mics. You just state your seats, get my attention, and we'll do it that way. And this will be as good as you make it. So it will somewhat incumbent upon you to ask some tough questions of them as well to encourage the discussion. To that end, Susan, Janet, Richard, Ronaldo, you want to come on up? And as you're walking up and taking your seats, I shall introduce you, starting with, who's coming up first? Hello, Janet. Starting with Janet Keeping, the president of the Sheldon Schumier Foundation for Ethics in Leadership. Beside her, Richard Moon, author and professor of law at the University of Windsor. And I guess that's the reference to somebody who traveled a long way to be here today, so thank you, Dick, for that. Susan G. Cole, you recognize her, the author, playwright, broadcaster, senior editor, now magazine, massive Blue Jay fan. <laughs> and Ronaldo Walcott, associate professor and chair of the Department of Sociology and Equity Studies in Education at OISE, the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. Please make them feel welcome for coming out this evening. Thank you. Thank you. 